Demystifying Surge Protection video series. This video discusses the IEC 61000-4-5 regulation standardizing surge testing, looking at the characteristic surge waveform and the factors determining the intensity of surge tests that systems must withstand. For background on surges, please see part one of this series. As discussed in the previous video, surges have a number of causes, but luckily, regardless of cause, they can be approximated by a standard waveform as defined by IEC 61000-4-5. This regulation defines the test waveform conditions and levels that ensure a system is robustly surge protected. Best practice is to ensure that all systems at risk of surges can be guaranteed against some level of IEC 61000-4-5. In some cases, this is not optional, as many product standards reference passing specific levels of IEC 61000-4-5 as a requirement for product certifications. The standard defines a characteristic surge as both a current waveform and a voltage waveform. The voltage waveform has a rise time of 1.2 microseconds and a half length of 50 microseconds, while the current waveform has a rise time of 8 microseconds and a half length of 20 microseconds. The surge tester must show the voltage waveform when the outputs are open circuited, while it must show the current waveform while the outputs are shorted. The surge tester, by definition, has a 2 ohm output impedance, so the voltage peak waveform will be twice the magnitude of the current waveform peak. To pass the IEC 61000-4-5 standard, a system must have this waveform applied to the system inputs with no damage sustained. When tested on a system, this waveform is applied with a peak voltage that typically ranges from 500 volts up to 4,000 volts. This magnitude is approximated by the risks of the environmental factors discussed in part one of this video series. For example, a hot plug might be approximated as a 500 volt surge, while a motor kickback might be approximated at 4,000 volts. This means peak currents of 250 amps and 2,000 amps respectively, based on the 2 ohm output impedance. In addition, IEC 61000-4-5 defines external coupling networks to simulate inductively coupled surges. For communication interfaces or equipment like sensors, where surges will almost always be coupled, the test is performed with an external 40 ohm series resistance, significantly attenuating the surge current applied to the system. This models the attenuation of the fault due to the inductive coupling. With the 40 ohm coupling, a 500 volt surge will now only induce 11.9 amps rather than the original 250 amps. In addition to the 40 ohm coupling network, the standard also defines a 10 ohm network for use between low voltage power supplies and ground. Understanding the surge waveform tells you your surge pulse length, while the open circuit voltage and coupling network determine the short circuit current of your surge test. With this information, you can begin designing a surge protection stage. To learn specific test requirements for your system, reference relevant product standards or approximate based on environmental risk factors. Now that there's an understanding of how to determine surge current test levels, in the next videos we will look at TVS diode specifications and how to select the proper TVS diode to prevent damage from a surge. Thank you for